So the scripture that Diane just read for us um, is a popular scripture, but perhaps some of you are not aware of it. I just want to remind you that Peter was the disciple who, went after Jesus was arrested, he was standing around in the courtyard warming his hands around some kind of charcoal fire, and there were some other people there, and uh, they asked Peter, um, uh, aren't you his disciple? And he said, oh, no, no, I'm not one of his disciples. And he denied Jesus three times. Now, later, the scripture that we have here is the resurrected Jesus, the Jesus who came from the tomb, who met um, his disciples at the Sea of Galilee. And this is the time when Jesus asks him three times, do you love me? And Peter's like, yes, I love you. Feed my sheep. Do you love me? I told you, I love you. Feed my sheep. Jesus asks, I love you one more time. And Peter says, gosh darn it, I told you three times. Yes, I love you. And Jesus says, feed my sheep. That's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I have to tell you, as I started to do my research and started to read um, the commentaries on, on this uh, on the scripture, I, I found someone that I really like. I go to a website called Working Preacher. Often that's my first go-to. And there is a woman, a theologian by the name of Caroline Lewis, who shared this perspective of the story of Peter saying, I love you to Jesus three times, that I thought was particularly insightful, and I hope you do too. So last week, we, if you remember, we um, explored the story of Thomas and how Thomas is so misinterpreted in the Christian world very often. And uh, we left off with the idea that, um, you know, that, that doubting is a good thing. And now we immediate, immediately, on the heels of Thomas, we go right to the story of Peter. And I think that the story of Peter is also very often misinterpreted. And I would like to think that both Thomas and Peter have something very real and something very human to teach all of us. Thomas is the doubter. Peter is the denier. Okay, let's go from there. If you remember the stories about Peter, Peter is the one who is so impetuous. He is so impulsive. Peter is the one who's always the first to answer one of Jesus' questions, whether he's right or wrong. He's trying so hard. He's the one who's so passionate and active in being a student of Jesus. Now, I don't know if, um, any, well, I, some of you are familiar with a sitcom in the 70s, one of my favorite sitcoms in the 70s. It was called Welcome Back, Cotter. And it was about a story of, um, it was, the, the sitcom was, uh, takes place in Brooklyn, and Mr. Cotter was the teacher to this group of misfit kids. It's actually the show that um, John Travolta uh, made his debut and became famous. But there was a character in that show that I think is just so much like Peter. This character's name was Horshack. And Horshack's thing was that whenever Mr. Cotter would ask a question, Horshack would go, oh, 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 I know. That's Peter. He's like the first to jump in and, and try and figure out what it is that Jesus is talking about. Peter is my Horshack. So um, let's review some of the stories of Peter that make me think of Horshack. Um, there, there are actually so many humorous stories of Peter, but here's three. Um, perhaps you will remember that Peter is the one who asks for a full body bath when Jesus is simply trying to wash his feet. Um, Peter is the one who, when Jesus was being arrested, became violent for the first time, violent, and he pulls his sword out and he cuts the ear off of a sentry. It turned out okay because Jesus healed it, but 
He was quick to act. And then, as Diane read, this is um, humorous too. Um, here, the the risen Christ, the the Jesus who is risen uh, from the tomb, is seen on the shores of of Galilee, and Peter is in a fishing boat, and he recognizes, holy crap, there's my Lord and Savior, and he doesn't want to wait for the boat to come to the shore, so he just jumps into the water and swims as fast as he can so that he can be with Jesus. That's, that's Peter. That's Peter. And so with this story of Jesus asking Peter three times, do you love me? We mustn't reduce this conversation between Peter and Jesus to some kind of um, opportunity to heal a relationship. You know, we often uh, will interpret this story as an opportunity for, um, for Peter to ask for forgiveness for the sin of denying him when Jesus needed him most. The dilemma with this interpretation is that nowhere in the biblical story does Jesus say, it's okay, Peter, I forgive you. You know, Peter was just being a human being denying Jesus when he was in prison. Does being a human being warrant Jesus' forgiveness? I think sometimes we think that this is all about forgiveness and so many stories in scripture are all about forgiveness because we have some kind, kind of idea that we're constantly needing to fix our relationship with God because we're constantly breaking, um, let's call it the covenant between God and humanity. That we're not perfect, that we're not what Jesus calls us to be. We need to ask for forgiveness for messing up on that relationship. Caroline Lewis, though, does a little bit more digging. And she reveals that um, what Peter needs is not so much forgiveness as he needs to accept what Jesus needs him to be. He needs to claim the name disciple. In John's gospel, um, when uh, Peter is standing around that charcoal fire, when um, his teacher, his Lord, his savior is imprisoned, um, not yet crucified, not yet punished, but just imprisoned, and he's there in the courtyard, what he's asked is, Aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? And he says, no, nope, not me. And they ask him again, aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? And he said, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, that's not me. That's, that's just, that's not me. And then maybe a third person say, hey, I recognize you. Aren't you one of Jesus' disciples? And again, for the third time, Peter says, no, that, that isn't me. Nowhere in the story where um, Jesus is on the shore with Peter does Jesus blame Peter or shame Peter. You know, Jesus never asked Peter to repent or ask for forgiveness of his sinful ways. You know, Jesus um, doesn't ask Peter, do you love me? just to um, point out that Peter failed him three times. Nowhere in the story does Jesus blame or shame Peter. And you know what? If that were true, that's not the Jesus that I love. That's not the Jesus in whom I believe. If that's true, then... I wouldn't necessarily be a Jesus' follower because that's really not a very nice thing to do to someone who is struggling and simply being a human being. 
Peter needs to be reminded that he indeed is Jesus' disciple. And maybe here on the beach, Jesus is giving Peter an opportunity to claim his identity, to claim who he is. He's giving him the opportunity to say, yes, Jesus, I am your disciple. And I will be a shepherd just like you. And I will pass on the baton that you have handed over to us. And so now I'd like to ask you the question, what does this story mean to us? What could it possibly mean when some guy 2,000 years ago is in need of therapy? What is that to us? Well, like probably all of the stories in scripture, this story is about us. This story teaches us about us and who we can be. And so when we look at Peter denying his identity, his identity, you know, we can face the truth that we all deny our true identity, every single one of us, some more than others. But we're all denying our true self. We deny because we worry that um, we won't meet someone's expectations. Or we deny because we're afraid that we are going to be judged. Self-protection isn't necessarily a bad thing. And maybe we um, might be rejected for claiming the truth of who we are. Maybe we deny who we truly are because uh, we don't believe that we are who we truly are. We don't believe that we are truly worthy to be a child of God, to be a disciple of Jesus. Have you ever heard of the idea of imposter's syndrome? This is a fairly new idea that um, I've become aware of. And basically, imposter syndrome is when a person, this is usually women, but not always by any means, but imposter syndrome is when a person just doesn't believe that they are as good as people are telling them they are. They just don't see that they can possibly be a leader, a CEO of a major corporation, that in some way they tricked everyone, in some way they are pretending to be that CEO or pretending to be that incredible actress that everyone says should win awards and they don't believe it themselves. They don't believe that they're that good. A lot of pastors have imposter syndrome, having a hard time believing that they are chosen, they are called to be Jesus' disciple, to be a shepherd as Jesus was. But being who we are and claiming who we are and being vulnerable and showing the world who we are is what Jesus calls us to do and to be. There is a woman by the name of Brene Brown who points out that when we are vulnerable, when we are showing the world who we truly are, not pretending to be something that somebody needs us to be, but being truly who we are, that's living a life where we are having authentic and meaningful relationships. That is where we live the life where we experience genuine love. We cannot have that kind of authentic, meaningful love, um, life and um, experience that genuine love if we are not really behaving 
in believing we are who we are. I think that maybe Peter standing around that charcoal fire denying that he is Jesus' disciple three times is basically an example of imposter syndrome. Maybe Peter just doesn't, he can't accept, he can't believe that he would actually be Jesus' disciple, that he would actually be called to carry on the baton of his teacher. And maybe he, he denied Jesus because he was terrified, that he was afraid that he would um, be a victim of the same uh, kind of violence or be arrested. Maybe Peter was unwilling to claim his identity as a disciple because, like so many of us, maybe he's a person who kind of goes through some kind of midlife crisis and we kind of reassess what is our identity. Perhaps Peter is suffering from imposter syndrome, and he simply cannot believe, he cannot accept that he would be chosen out of all the people that Jesus could have chosen, that he would be chosen to be a disciple. And I wonder when there are times, and I'm not saying if there are times, because we all have these times. When have you had that time when you could not imagine that Jesus would commission and call little old me to do the work of Christ? When have you accepted the idea that we are called to the most awesome responsibility of carrying on Jesus' call and being the good shepherd. I think that there are frequently times when we cannot believe that to be so for us. It is a huge responsibility to claim the identity of being a shepherd, of caring for God's sheep, of loving and nurturing and speaking truth, and being those hands and feet of Jesus, because if we really do that, if we really are the mouthpiece for God, if we really are the hands and feet of Jesus, that's a pretty awesome identity. A pretty, a, 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 an identity that's very hard at times to accept because we just don't feel good enough to do what God is calling us to do. Moses was the same way. Abraham was the same way. David was the same way. All these people who were called to do God's work, were the, they were all the same way. They could not accept the call that God has on their lives, the awesome responsibility to do God's work in this world. But Jesus, in this story, that we should and could relate to Jesus shows up on this shore of the lake in Galilee and hosts yet another meal. And by asking Peter, do you love me? It's kind of making Peter remember his identity. Yes, Jesus I love you, and I love you so much that I believe that you believe in me. And yes, Lord, I love you, and I accept the identity of a disciple of yours, that for some whatever reason you have, 
you chose me to be the one who passes on the message. That is the story for you and me. Yes, God, I love you. And as hard and as unbelievable as it may be, I guess I am your disciple. I guess I am a child of God. I guess as I did claim to be a Christian, I am your hands and feet. As hard as that is to believe that God would choose me, that God would choose you, that God would choose us for the awesome responsibility of bringing the kingdom here on earth, as hard as that is to believe, it is the truth. We have been called to share the gospel of God's love. We are good enough. Every single one of us, no matter what we have done, no matter who we have been, our authentic self is disciples. The true self is the spreader of God's love. Our true meaning and purpose in life is to shepherd those into this kind of divine love that you and I have experienced. We are good enough to spread God's radical love.